I'm going to discuss not just tension band, but cerclage wiring. This has a bad rap, uh, which has been developed over many years, because without good X-ray tech uh, availability and with excessive dissection and uh, implants that were inadequate, wiring was often applied in battles that were already lost and uh, using suboptimal technique. So this is an old school technique that I think is really worthwhile revisiting. There are alternatives to monofilament stainless steel wire, wire that, uh, that can't be seen, uh, such as ultra high molecular, molecular weight polyethylene suture, the Arthrex fiber wire, the Kinemed super cable, isoelastic polymer, and then there are braided cables that you can see that every company makes. Uh, and I, 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 have no, uh, uh, I, I have no disclosures. I have no um, uh, financial interest in any, any company, but uh, there are, there's a lot of money uh, and talk about um, price transparency in healthcare. Um, these alternatives to monofilament stainless steel wire are very expensive. There's a um, famous philosophical question, if a tree falls in the forest and there's no one there to hear it, does it make a sound? Well, if you use a cerclage technique and you can't see the cerclage, is it strangling the bone? Well, here's a case that was recently referred to our hospital, uh, a near, in a nearby hospital, this periprosthetic distal femur fracture was fixed with an interlocking, uh, interlocking nail and to get the reduction, three uh, fiber tape wires were, uh, fiber tape sutures were applied. Uh, in the recovery room, the patient was noted to not have any pulses and the le limb was cold and they transferred to our hospital for vascular surgery. And you could see there's a, there was a fiber tape around the popliteal artery, which was released and uh, angioplasty performed, restoring the circulation. Monofilament wire is inexpensive. It's readily available. Specialized instrumentation is not necessary. And it can be incrementally tensioned like the other cerclage devices, and it's radio opaque, which you may or may not like, but I like to see what I've done and follow it. All you need is a number seven cardiothoracic wire, which is in any hospital, and a wire twister clamp. That plus a uh, wire driver, a power wire driver, and a wire cutter, and you're set. So if you're ever in the middle of a case and you need and you want to circlage something or tension band it, you've got you've got the equipment. Cables cost about four hundred dollars each. Fiber tape five hundred dollars each, and sternal wire for a uh, eighteen inch long uh, wire. It's ten dollars for a pack of four. That's two fifty. About a buck and a buck and a quarter for a single single uh, wrap. If you want to go around the bone twice, it's use the whole thing. In 2020, uh, an article uh, I published in Techniques in Orthopedics, which is available uh, open source if you want to look at it, discuss, describes many techniques and configurations for tension band and cerclage. And uh, I presented on Zoom at the 12th POTS four years ago. Uh, and the uh, lecture I gave is available on YouTube, OrthoClips, and Bumetti. Uh, and uh, if you're interested, take a look, please. Today, I'll briefly review some of the key points of that lecture about optimizing tension band and uh, go on to discuss some cerclage applications. I also would like to offer, if anybody's interested after the conference is over, I could use this table here for 15 minutes. I could demonstrate some of the techniques and you could try out. I have some, some devices and wire here if anybody wants to try it. A wire that is applied to the tension side of uh, a bone that's subject or a fracture that's subjected to tensile forces that is that resists, neutralizes, or counteracts the tensile forces and converts them to compressive forces on the opposite side of the bone is a tension band fracture fixation device. This concept was introduced by Frederick Powell's. And when supplemented by interfragmentary fixation, whether that be a pin, a screw, or a little plate, 
It's an, a very effective and inexpensive method of fixing small evulsion fractures or osteotomy fragments, even in osteoporotic bone and even if the fractures are comminuted. Again, combining it with interfragmentary fixation, I've personally used this technique in 17 locations on, in, the, uh, in, in the human body, eight in the upper extremity, nine in the lower extremity. If you have a, uh, a uh, uh, bias against this concept, um, thinking that you're strangula strangulating the bone or some, some other uh, uh, teaching that's been uh, uh, driven into us over the years, I'll try to make you more receptive, receptive by submitting you to a barrage of cases. When I was in, uh, at the Academy meeting in 2018, I came across on the uh, exhibit floor this Chinese company that was showing ring pins. Once I discovered ring pins, which I later discovered was available in America since 1996, that eliminated most of the headaches I was having with tension band wiring in terms of uh, the interfragmentary pins migrating. I learned that in uh, Korea, the, the uh, tension band ring pins, these, these uh, interfragmentary 1.6 millimeter K wires with, with ring holes, had been used for olecranon fractures, reported in the journal of hand surgery, with no pin migrations, no non-unions, no hardware failures, and for patella fractures, also a, a Korean group, 36 patella fractures, same thing, all healed, no migrations. And then there are a couple of articles that showed uh, using tension band wiring supplemented by mini plates, uh, one for olecranons and one for patellas uh, that also had excellent results. And I started using these techniques several years ago. This is one of the first cases I did, olecranon fracture, tension band ring pin. There's another one, you can see there's a common muted uh, uh, triangular fragment of the, uh, on, the, on the shaft side that if that displaces, you're gonna, just the tension band ring pins alone, you'll lose fixation. So I added a mini plate there. There's a transverse patella fracture, which very commonly the transverse patella fractures have a coronal split in the distal fragment. And if you uh, just tension band, tension band those uh, without a supplemental plate, the construct can fall apart as the, the, the wire pulls the anterior part of the distal fragment off. So I use the, uh, mini plate with that. This is what it looked like in the yellow wall. In another case, is a 16 year old with a tibial tubercle avulsion fracture flipped around retinacular expansions, torn off the patella as is common in adolescence. And I used a, a tip threaded 1.6 K wires with the uh, interfragmentary pins, tension band wire. And then I used a uh, protection wire, uh, a 1.25 millimeter wire drilled through the patella Crossed figure of eight anterior to the patella tendon and then passed through a cannulated screw in the tibia. Took it out and that's what it looked like healed. Here's an 84 year old osteopenic woman with a tibial tubercle avulsion, uh, common muted, just cardboard uh, tibial tubercle with the patella tendon attached. And I used that same technique with the uh, 1.25 millimeter wire drilled through the patella, crossed figure of eight in front of the patella tendon, passed through a cannulated screw and uh, just used a, a corkscrew um, suture anchor for the tibial tubercle fragment, and there it is with the wire removed later. A couple of fibular head avulsions associated with in, unstable knees. Uh, here's one with a tip threader 1.6K wires, and here's a patient with a floating knee, sciatic nerve palsy, and uh, you could see the fibular head avulsed and fixed with tension band ring pins. There's my dissection exploring the perineal nerve. There's a small medium allelar anterior colliculus fragment, uh, fracture fragment in a uh, uh, bimal. This is what it would look like on a sawbone and what it looked like when we fixed it. Here's the reverse the supination adduction injury with a transverse small lateral, lateral, lateral malleolar Weber A fragment. Fix that same way with tension band ring pins. Here's a list frank base of fifth metatarsal fracture with a kind of adducted uh, inst adduction instability of the foot that I tension band wired the uh, 
base of the fifth metatarsal look like that when we fixed it. The greater trochanter, whether it's fractured or you do an osteotomy, you can fix it with ring pins, interfragmentary lag screws, and a tension band wire. Here's a osteotomy I performed for a uh, uh, extended posterior superior acetabular wall fracture dislocation and uh, used a combination of uh, interfragmentary ring pin and lag screw. And here's a graded trochanter avulsion fracture in an elderly woman uh, and uh, used tension band ring pins for that. A displaced graded tuberosity humerus fracture in an anterior glenohumeral dislocation fixed with uh, tension band ring pins and a uh, suture anchor. That's what that would look like on a sawbone. Common unit olecranon fracture. Uh, this, before I had access to the tension band ring pins, I kind of curled up some uh, K wires and made my own ring pins with that and supplemented it with a mini frag plate. Post up. Is an acromial non-union. You drive the pins from the uh, acromion into the spine of the scapula and then supplement it with a uh, mini frag plate. Medial epicondyle avulsion fracture in an adolescent gymnast fixed with uh, interfragmentary pins and tension band wire. That's what it would look like on a sawbone. And another 14-year-old uh, Baseball playing kid who uh, evulsed his medial epicondyle, fixed with tension man ring pins. So that's that's a little review of tension band wiring. Now let's get to uh, cerclage. Cerclage is a French word meaning encirclement, and uh, the uh, the wire uh, rat or whatever you want going to use for the cerclage is excellent for reducing and holding a spiral fracture, as well as holding a plate on where you have a, the medullary canal filled and you can't put screws in through the plate, or to apply it to a hold a strut graft on. Here's a periprosthetic femur fracture. Uh, this is a, we were just talking about this today, is a pattern where you have the, uh, uh, the tip of the stem still in the canal. Uh, the lesser and greater trochanters are separated and I circlage them on with a, a plate and revise the stem to a uh, diaphyseal fitting Wagner type stem. Spiral femur fractures, you don't have to dissect all the way from top to the bottom. You just get a, you can get a clamp around the end of the spike, pass a wire around it, take the clamp off, and then use your interlock nail, you're set. You don't have to put six wires on that. Here's another proximal femur fracture, spiral, one cerclage wire, and a uh, cephalomedullary nail. The nice thing about putting the, about reducing the, the uh, spiral fractures and putting the cerclage in, so you know you have your length in your rotation light. There's no guess, and the, the rest of the operation is simple. As an osteopenic 73-year-old woman with a uh, spiral fracture, again, cerclage retrograde nail. And here's a six-year-old boy who had a femoral shaft fracture when his brother jumped on him last September. Spiral infraismal femoral shaft fracture. And if you notice, I don't know if you could see it on the, on the screen, but there's a non-displaced large butterfly fragment associated with the distal fragment. Now, if that displaces, it becomes an axially unstable fracture. If it stays on, you have a stable fracture, and he's uh, of the age and size that you can use flexible elastic nails which is what we did. We cerclaged the butterfly so it would stay on. While we were there, we cerclaged the main fragments again so we have the length and the rotation right and put in some elastic nails and there he is healed. There's a commonly seen spiral periprosthetic distal femur fracture above a total knee. That uh, Here's a couple of cases of those. Uh, Eight-year-old woman with one of those. And I like using this approach, the extensile medial parapetellar approach, which was described in Techniques in Orthopedics 2018. And uh, it's kind of a variation on the quad snip, but this is what you, what you can see. You, they already have an incision for the total knee. You extend it up a few centimeters proximally, 
and develop the plane between the rectus and the vastus medialis, dislocate the patella laterally, and you can see everything, the, fra the total knee, the starting point, the, you, know, you can kind of fine tune the depth of the nail insertion, uh, get all your interlocking screws in through this and clamp and reduce the uh, uh, spiral fracture. Generally one, one wire is enough and then use an interlocking nail. As you see here, and six weeks post-op, and another case, similar thing. There's the 3D CT, one cerclage, retrograde interlocking nail, four months post-op. So that article that I referenced before has uh, eight or nine videos in, uh, embedded in it. Uh, and uh, if you just look up the article online, you can click on them and watch the videos. Uh, my daughter, when she was 14, she filmed and edited them, and I'm kind of proud of her. But uh, if this PowerPoint gets posted to uh, OrthoClips, you'll be able to watch these uh, these videos. I put I added them on at the end, and uh, uh, otherwise, uh, I invite anyone who's interested at the end of this session. I will uh, stick around, and I have some instruments here and demonstrate techniques for you. Thank you.